Last episode, we looked at all the Minecraft 4 patterns that used only reflectional symmetry. Now we're going to look at all the patterns that just use rotational symmetry. In fact, we're actually going to look at three new patterns today, and they can be kind of paired up with the reflection patterns we've already looked at. And in the reflection patterns, star 442, its name, meant that the basic tile that makes up the pattern had two corners with four lines of reflective symmetry through them and one corner with two lines of reflective symmetry through them. The naming convention for the rotational patterns is pretty much the same, you're just counting points of rotation instead of points of reflection. So in Minecraft, you can really only have two points of rotation, which is fourfold rotation and twofold rotation. By the way, this is why there's only 12 of these floor patterns in Minecraft. There's 17 of them in the real world, but five of them require shapes that are incompatible with a perfectly square grid. Hence, Minecraft only has 12 of them. So the way you'd build up a rotational floor pattern is you pick your tile, you pick some points along its edge to act as points of rotation, and then you just spin it around those points. And there's two ways to pick those points on rectangles so that the rectangle will perfectly fill an entire flat surface. For example, here, there's two fourfold rotations in the bottom left and bottom right corners. And then the middle of the opposite edge has a two-fold rotational point. So these are a little bit different than the reflecting reds because our points of interest can be along the edge. They don't have to be on a corner. And if you take this tile and just keep spinning it around those three points, you get this pattern. Uh, the wool would all just be one color, but I've colored the wool of each tile differently just so you can kind of tell where each tile starts and ends. By the way, this does only work with a perfect two by one rectangle. So one option is to just use the same glazed terracotta block twice, and this becomes your base rectangle. Specifically, you would imagine a point of fourfold rotational symmetry on this corner, another on this corner, and then a point of twofold rotational symmetry on that corner. Twofold rotational symmetry pretty much just means flipping something upside down. And then if you just keep spinning it around those points, you get this pattern. If we zoom in here, yeah, so here's an example of the original rectangle we're using. And so this corner, yep, pretty nice fourfold spinning shape, another fourfold spinning shape, and then these little arms, you can imagine them kind of like being flipped upside down and looking the same. One problem I found with these types of patterns, though, is that as you make the base tile bigger, it gets a lot harder to see the symmetry. In fact, this tile right here is modified from one of our reflecting red patterns. In fact, it was my favorite reflecting red pattern. And here, it just kind of comes out looking random. I mean, your eye can tell that there's a grid of some kind going on with the little like red cogs and the silver dinner plates. But yeah, it, it takes but it takes me a second just to find. Yeah, so here's one point of fourfold rotational symmetry. One reason this might be is that if you use a glazed terracotta block that already has reflective symmetry, it confuses the eye. So you see a bunch of tiny chunks with reflective symmetry like right here and right here, and that ends up overpowering the rotational symmetry that's hidden here. I guess it's the equivalent of like oversalting your food. So the reflectional symmetries are pretty salty, and if you're going for an herby rotational dish, you can't add too much reflection or else it'll overpower all the herbs. Another option is to take a rectangle and put four points of two-fold rotational symmetry on it. Uh, two of those points at adjacent corners, and then another two on opposite edges in the middle. This gives us four ways to kind of clone one tile into another, depending on which of those four rotational points you use. And if you just keep cloning new tiles like this, you end up with this pattern. I don't know if I like this pattern, but you can at least tell that there's symmetry here besides just the repeating of the grid. Another option is to actually have your base tile be diagonally aligned to the Minecraft grid. Here with the observers, this is going to be kind of weird, but try to imagine a rectangle that goes from the middle of this observer down to this corner, across this observer to this corner, and then up to the middle of here. And then the last edge would run from the middle of that observer to this one. It's super funky, but you can totally use that to make a 442 pattern. And this pattern here is the same thing done with the red glazed terracotta. I also tried stuff like trapdoors and mixing glazed terracotta, which 
came out all right probably stuff to explore there these two here though are my favorite designs because they're kind of the limits of how big i was able to inflate the size of the base tile here we're using a diagonal 442 pattern so this is a point of four fold rotational symmetry this is a point of four fold and that's a point of two fold right there so the actual rectangle would run from this dot to that one over to here and to that dot so almost like this is a two by one rectangle using the dot grid instead of the minecraft grid and sure enough if you take that rectangle and keep spinning it around you get this pattern and here's a thumbnail one so this is a quadruple two pattern four points each with two-fold rotational symmetry one of them it kind of tricks the eye it looks like it has fourfold but that's just in the area near it if you zoom out more yeah this point actually would screw up the grid if you tried to apply fourfold rotational symmetry instead of twofold yeah i think this is super neat so we got twofold point here twofold twofold and twofold there's one more pattern that i'm just kind of forcing into this video it's just called o but it's the pattern where there's no rotational or reflective symmetry it's just some shape that you shift you know left to right up and down in a square or rectangular grid Obviously, any Minecraft texture that doesn't really have any symmetries, you can use to make this pattern. There is a good reason to include the O pattern with quadruple two and four, four, two. These are the only three, four patterns where you can actually move them through all of their symmetries without like lifting them up off the flat surface. Any reflectional pattern, you'd have to like, imagine if it was a tablecloth, you'd have to like lift it up, flip it over. Uh, these three patterns, all you ever have to do is spin or shift the floor pattern to get its symmetries. And so they're nicknamed the true blues because they're the three patterns you can create while leaving your surface truly flat. Okay, so we got the true blues, the reflecting reds, all we have left is the hybrids. To recap, true blues are the patterns you can make where you leave the pattern flat, so only using rotational or no symmetry at all. Reflecting reds use only reflectional symmetry to generate the pattern. The hybrids are going to use a combination of reflection, rotation, and shifting. We'll deal with those next time though. My name's Chris. Thanks for watching.